Hi, my name's Ian Atkinson, and this is my review of the Hasselblad 907X 50C. I've been a photographer for the uh, best part of 25 years, um, shooting mainly large format, medium format film until the digital age um, when phase one introduced the digital back and I've been using phase one for the past 10 years. I came up with an idea really that it would be really nice to see how it performs on a various different camera models which the camera back can be disengaged from the lens and its own body and used on a variety of different medium format, large format cameras. I'm making that look very difficult. It really isn't because I was just looking at camera, sorry. Um, but we can use it um, on the 503CW, which I have here with a 50 mil lens. Obviously this is our original modular system where we have a interchangeable lenses, interchangeable bodies, and interchangeable film backs. And we can now utilize the digital back to go on the back of the Hasselblad 503CW. And also uh, our Linhoff Techno here, um, technical camera that we can fix uh, the back to via an adapter. It's worth pointing out that the back will basically go on any camera system that has the ability to take a V plate fitting, i.e. V system Hasselblad, a V plate on the back of the Linhoff, or even on Mamiya cameras that, that accept some form of a plate. We are going to make prints from each different system so that we can see exactly the different feels that we might get and also the usability on those systems when we're on location. So that's very exciting. I'm very excited to see how it performs not only in its smallest uh, format with the XCD lenses but also the other two cameras that we're going to be using um, with the background. I came on Friday to look at it, it was awful. I was going, it's the wrong place, it's awful. And then now it's alive. Yeah, I like this, I like this, and I like this. It's just whether, whether he needs to be bigger in the frame, or whether he's too small. This is a bit more important that we shoot the same aperture, so at least we can see that the depth of field and the, um, the sharpness is the same. We've got some light, let's go, let's go. Chin down a bit. 
Head a bit straighter. Not too much. That's it. That's it. That's nice. That's nice. That's lovely. Hey, lovely. Okay, so we've uh, finished our shoot here at um, Stanbridge Mill. Um, the light has turned out to be absolutely stunning. And it's been, uh, I never actually shot with three cameras on the same uh, image before, so it's gonna be very interesting to see how they turn out. Um, first thoughts, initial thoughts are, it's great. Um, my dis biggest disappointment is I'm probably gonna have to give it back and I don't really want to give it back. Um, with the XCD lens, it was great. I used autofocus for a bit, but I still ended up shooting uh, manual focus towards the end. Uh, pretty seamless in terms of um, how, how, how it functioned. Um, I had some concerns about the screen being the only um, the only way to compose and see the image um, but that was unfounded um, it looked great perhaps maybe you can't see anything in the shadows that you might see if you're using a, a, an optical finder um, having said that I, I, I still think it worked extremely well um, weather sealing is something that we haven't necessarily had a an issue with today but historically as a photographer I've never really needed it. Um, it I, the Linhof isn't weather sealed. My Hasselblads were never weather sealed. It's you know it's something you just have to deal with as a photographer. If you're going to go out in those kind of climates where you need it, then maybe this isn't for you. But for me as a photographer, it's not something that would be of particular issue. Um, I think also what's really interesting is you know kind of the price point i'm not trying to plug it as something that you should buy because it's a particular it, it, it's a cheapest thing i've talked extensively with colleagues friends um where i had a linoff technocarden 10 years ago i had a hasselblad 503 10 years ago if i could have then spent five six thousand pounds to put something on the back of it to turn it into a digital camera it would have been amazing I think it really worked really beautifully well with photographers maybe who still like to shoot film on classic cameras that they can then adapt it to a digital when they need to. Maybe on the 503CW, uh, I used live view focus still, B setting on, on, the, on the lens so I could view, still expand the image to, uh, to focus. So it wasn't much of a, an issue really but it is a bit more protracted than it might be with the XCD lenses. On the Linhof, it was beautiful, absolutely beautiful to be able to see the image, to be able to use the movements, to be able to shift the, the, um, the back across to, for composition and see that in live view mode with a rolling shutter that is basically a video um, was, 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 was exceptional. So with the Linhof, the electronic shutter was stunning worked really beautifully so working in a landscape with no flash uh, really really nice the 907x with the cf50 back or cf52 back um, i think handheld it's a really beautiful experience screen's great autofocus is not as fast as you might have on a digital slr but certainly workable with the 503, I think, again, it works in a very similar way to it does on the 907X. You have that same ability to hold it in the same way. The feel is the same. Maybe that's why it's so natural to move from one to the other. Um, I haven't shot with a 503 for 10 years, but it was just, it was instinctive. It was really nice. Um, yes, it's going to have some issues, perhaps, with focusing or you've been using it with film it might be worth having it serviced to make sure that the focus plane is exactly where it needs to be but it was still a very very unenjoyable experience and not one that would stop me from using it
So uh, moving on from here, go back to the studio, look at the images, choose the images, and then we're going to send them off for print, do some large format prints, and super excited to see um, how each system uh, pans out, how it looks, how, it, how what the feel of the images might be. Um, on screen, they look very similar. So I think the truth will be in the printing. And I still look at camera all the way through to the end. So obviously one of the hassles of having a modular system where you're moving the back from a 907 to a Hasselblad 503CW or one of the other Hasselblad ranges or you're putting it on a large format is obviously the dust issues um, but one of the great things is it's an absolute piece of cake to clean. Um, so I've got a tissue with a little bit of solution on clean the solution off, evaporate immediately, blow a brush, visual check, pop the 907X back on, lens if you can find the uh, And we're done. So looking at the prints, um, interestingly, uh, I purposely um, printed them uh, straight out of the uh, Focus software. So there is a tiny amount of contrast, maybe 10, 12 uh, contrast on the slider, uh, no sharpening, uh, no color adjustment, the images are straight out of the raw file. White balance is as shot, um, so I didn't uh, use any different white balances. We had quite an interesting day in terms of weather. Uh, one minute it was beautiful sunshine, the next minute it was clouded over, so that's why we've got some characteristic differences. Uh, we use flash, um, as you can see probably during the shooting element of the, of the process, and um, that again was a little bit fraught in places only because trying to find which connector we needed to connect the uh, flash unit to. Again, it was sorted once once we worked it out, it was fine. I did some further tests on the flash when I came back, just checking all the settings, moving the, the back from one system to another. And again, that was absolutely fine. Um, so no problems using flash in mechanical shutter mode. Um, looking at the prints, this image uh, is shot uh, with the Linhof. Um, didn't put it underneath to prove that that's exactly why, but this is shot with the Linhof. Um, again, really beautiful definition and sharpness in the in the image. Not really bothered about sharpness to be honest. I'm more interested in how it resolves the image and how the digital back resolves through the lenses. Um, really crisp backgrounds. You can see actually the depth of field kind of holds all the way through, which you would kind of expect. We shot this at f16, because um, that's probably the best aperture um, to shoot the lenses lenses with. Um, I think we could have opened it up and softened off the background, but I was more interested in seeing how it resolved uh, in terms of depth. Um, beautiful sharpness all the way through the, the, the front of the image. Great clarity, back works brilliantly on this system. This is uh, the 503CW uh, print. Again, 
I think, you know, the color wise, the color out of the lens is, is pretty similar. If we look in here, this is a bit brighter because we've got a little bit more, a little bit more sun maybe in, in, in the image or maybe a little bit more flash would probably be more, more correct. But we can see even when we shot at f16 that the lens drifts off quite, quite, quite a, a great deal in terms of the depth of field. So there's definitely a softer feel in the background and a softer feel in the sky than what we might have with a more modern Rodenstock. Um, having said that, it's actually quite a nice characteristic. Uh, I think if we'd had a, a, a foreground portrait in, in a landscape, then this would drift off really nicely and we'd have a nice uh, softness. And again, we could, because of our ability to use live view focusing, we could um, even shoot the lens wider open. We might even get a even more pronounced softness in the background. So there's definitely a big characteristic difference between shooting this lens and this. But if we look at the areas in which we focused, again, we've got a good level of sharpness. It is slightly softer, although, I, like I say, I left the sharpening off because I just wanted to see how we get the image directly out of camera. Um, obviously, there is the native sharpening applied by focus, but it's not, it's not a huge amount. But we can see there's a nice softness in here. Um, it's cert the lens certainly resolved the image really well. I'm not worried about whether there's any kind of smearing or kind of you know stuff that's not that shouldn't really be there in the characteristic of the lens but it's certainly here where we focused it looks great and obviously he's not right on the center of frame either he's off to the, the side of frame obviously this lens covers six by six centimeters and we're using a four centimeter um, chip so we've got quite a, a, a big image circle to get the maximum sharpness out of the lens um, and this is our native uh, 907X. Again, really good crisp sharpness. There's definitely a bit more of a modern feel to it than in here. We can see the depth of field almost carries um, all the way to the, to, to the back of the image. Um, and certainly we can see that there's greater um, sharpness here. So, uh, and this is shot at f16. Again, um, I don't, see, I don't see anything really in the image to, to concern me um, and I think it works really, really beautifully. Um, this is an image that I kind of did a little bit of um, gradation um, there's, and there's no uh, white, but like I say, we just did auto white balance throughout um, the, the system just to see how it works. Um, I didn't even do a grey card reading to be honest, um, which is something that I would do if I was really looking for accurate accurate color um, I was able to pull the file all over the place which is what you would expect with a 50 megapixel medium format sensor not I, I because I've been using digital large format um, other di other manufacturers digital backs I think now the it's almost pointless talking about you know how sharp or how much resolution there is we all know that 50 megapixels is going to give you an amazing um, amount of detail within the image. Um, the images are only slightly smaller than what come out of the camera. So we're looking at um, a 30-inch uh, uh, print direct out of camera. I, I, I think I could probably blow this up to well over uh, uh, two meters and it would still be an amazing looking image. Um, I think when, it, when we talk in terms of the 907X and the, uh, the 500 series Hasselblad, um, yes, we've got a greater depth of field drop off than we might have um, with this lens. Again, I think you'd need further testing on whether if we shot a uh, wider open 5.6, f8, whether we might have a similar feel. I doubt we'd get the same kind of softness from the, from the lens though which is definitely a characteristic. You either love it or you hate it. It's up to you. My favorite, the thing that really makes me interested in this camera is the size. I think I said to somebody a few days ago, um, if Ansel Adams was still alive today, would he be using this camera? Absolutely.
So I'm Ian Atkinson. I'm an advertising and editorial photographer. This is my first time in front of camera and my first time making any kind of review. Um, it's been weird, properly weird. I had the idea of how I wanted to do it. I definitely wanted to shoot prints, definitely wanted to shoot on location. Hopefully we've made quite a nice picture and um, the results are as you can see on the wall. Thank you.